very much. This speech hits extremely home, extremely close to home for my family and I. And I hope that for all of you that are hearing it, that you won't just hear it, but that you'll be able to listen and it'll impact you as much as it has impacted me uh, in creating it. Today, we pay tribute through remembering the tragic loss of lives on September 11th, 2001. We reflect on the brave and committed first responders who served their country that day in helping search and care for others whom they didn't even know. We also reflect today on the men and women from our military community that have served and sacrificed, in some of the cases, giving their own lives in the global war on terrorism, resulting from the tragic attacks of 9-11. From, from the time of the initial plane crashing into the World Trade Center, no one could have predicted the outcome of that day and the days to follow. The brave first responders couldn't have known that this tragedy was the worst case scenario playing out in front of them. However, these men and women dug their feet in, putting one, feet in, one foot in front of the other, knowing full well that this could possibly mean them giving their last true measure of devotion, their life. Everyone went about their way that day on the morning of 9-11 just like any other day in New York City, Washington, D.C., and Shanksville, Pennsylvania. The men and women who worked at the World Trade Center, those serving as police officers and firefighters, those who worked and served in the Pentagon, and those who simply boarded a plane to go somewhere, leaving home expecting to have a day like any other. As these men and women kissed their families goodbye, grabbed a cup of coffee, or even read a book on the train heading into work, they had no clue how their day and their lives, as well as the lives of their families, would shortly change forever. People from all walks of life responded to the attacks of 9-11. Firefighters, police officers, EMS workers, military men and women, volunteers, iron workers, construction workers and laborers, to name a few. Some lost their lives and others were able to make it home safely to family. The total number killed that day, 2,977. Those who lost a spouse or a partner, 1,609. The number of children who lost a parent, 3,051. As former President George W. Bush said on December 11th, 2001, every one of the victims who died on September 11th was the most important person to someone. First responders has grown to be a well-known term since 9-11. The Random House Dictionary defines the term first responders as a person who is certified to provide medical care in emergencies before more highly trained medical personnel arrive on the scene. Well, in my opinion, all of the first responders who reacted to the tragedies of that day acted as they should in helping those in need. The total number of firefighters and paramedics who lost their lives on December on 9-11 was 343. The total number of policemen, 23. And the number of Port Authority police officers, 37. Former President George W. Bush also stated, the attack took place on American soil, but it was an attack on the heart and soul of the civilized world. And the world has come together to fight a new and different war, the first, and we hope the last, of the 21st century. A war against all those who seek to export terror and a war against those governments that support or shelter them. On October 7, 2001, the war on terror began. The term war on terror, referring specifically to the ongoing military campaign resulting from the 9-11 attacks, was first stated by former President George W. Bush on September 20th, 2001. The casualties of the global war on terrorism have been insurmountable. The total Operation Enduring Freedom, Afghanistan, hostile deaths, 1,843. The total, the total Operation Enduring Freedom, Afghanistan, wounded in action, 20,071. The total Operation Iraqi Freedom, hostile deaths, 3,000. 481, and the total Operation Iraqi Freedom Wounded in Action, 31,951. Today, 
We honor all those heroic men and women's bravery and sacrifices the only way that we know how. Everyone mourns differently, but as a society, we honor those we lost by doing the most important thing that we can, simply remember. We also honor their lives and sacrifices by living our lives to our utmost potential in order to make their sacrifices worth something now and into the future. I want to take this time to thank you all for attending this 9-11 Remembrance Ceremony today by showing our support of the many lives, families, and communities that have been affected by the devastation on 9-11. We keep their memories alive and their sacrifices honored long into the future. According to a 2014 study in the Journal of Occupational and Environmental Medicine, nearly 17% of emergency medical services workers who responded to 9-11 terrorist attacks display symptoms of depression, and 7% show signs of post-traumatic stress disorder. This study was the, the first to focus solely on EMS workers. This study involved 2,281 EMS workers over a 12-year period since 9-11. The study report stated that they documented a high burden of health conditions associated with World Trade Center exposures among Fire Department New York EMS workers. Beyond depression and PTSD, other conditions documented in the study that affected their physical health included 12% who experienced acid reflux disease and 3% who experienced cancer. It was found that the earlier a medical worker responded, the greater his or her risk for medical conditions. Those numbers only accounted for EMS workers and did not include numbers from other first responder communities or surveys of overall first responder medical conditions, which are many with many sufferers. The Journal of Occupational and Environmental Medicine is a good resource for statistics of medical conditions related to World Trade Center exposures. Personally, being a Marine infantryman and having served in direct combat operations in the global war on terrorism and having lost men under my direct charge, I feel like many others that have experienced both combat operations and the daily sights and responsive lives lost in a first responder's role, whether it be a fellow service member or coworker that you were in charge of, knew or cared about, or even a patient that you tried to save but couldn't. Anniversaries of those events don't mean what a typical anniversary means to others. It means that it is that many years of something that never ends, almost as if the event is on repeat every day. This isn't the case for everybody, but it is for me, and it is for a lot of us. Though it is easy to see someone's physical injuries, it is sometimes very difficult to identify and properly diagnose mental health conditions. Though individuals in some cases can continue to function with physical and psychological injuries, over time, if not identified and treated, they can lead to symptoms worsening that can negatively affect personal readiness of the organization. In the military, there has always been a stigma about identifying oneself with mental health issues, mainly as a sign of weakness. As a senior enlisted member of the Marine Corps, I had a decision to make that involved just that back in October of 2013 when I was on a deployment with the 3rd Battalion 1st Marines, 1st Marine Division in Okinawa, Japan. I could sit back and hope that the issues that I was experiencing of worsening depression and suicidal thoughts would get better even if I were to stand out as someone of weakness. But in my mind, I made the decision to stand out and seek mental health assistance through the Marine Corps Deployment Health Center to ensure my safety and as a leadership lesson to others, setting the example for others to emulate. I was ultimately diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder and major depressive disorder. It is hard to admit to yourself that something is wrong with you especially in a type A personality field environment. But it takes a lot of courage to stand up and do what is right by yourself. The military suicide epidemic is roughly 23 veterans losing their life daily. That is accounting for one active duty service member and 22 veterans a day. I personally have had four suicide attempts and continue to battle with my issues stemming from my combat deployments on a regular basis, which is one of the factors that my wife and I used when considering getting my service dog, Bailey. My platoon during my Iraq 2007 deployment, 
We lost three Marines that were killed in action. I wear this killed in action bracelet to honor their lives and sacrifices. Their names are also etched in stone on the bench in this NS Veterans War Memorial in the Glo Global War on Terror section. I know that I didn't do anything that caused their deaths and I couldn't have done anything to prevent them. However, they were my responsibility as their platoon sergeant, so no matter how much therapy I have gone through or people who tell me it is not my fault, I still feel the guilt of not bringing them home safely to their families. First Lieutenant Sean Blue and Lance Corporal Juan De La Torre were blown up by an improvised explosive device and IED just north of Fallujah. Lieutenant Blue was a platoon commander and Lance Corporal De La Torre was his driver. Three other Marines survived the attack in the same vehicle and sustained severe injuries. Corporal Gary Huber was the gunner and Corporal Manny Provencio and Denny Salis Lance Corporal Denny Salisbury were backseat dismounts. Lance Corporal Johnny Strong was later shot in the head by a sniper and was instantly killed while on a dismounted patrol in Karma, Iraq. There were many others injured that deployment, too many to list here. These men are heroes of mine and I think of them daily. A lot of soldiers, Marines and Navy corpsmen, don't like to talk about their combat experiences for one reason or another. But I hope to use mine as a voice for those that can't or won't speak out about their own. There is a saying that if someone talks about their combat experiences, then they probably don't have any. Though that sometimes is the case, it's not all of the time. Just like many others, I have had some close calls while on combat missions. For example, the sniper round that was shot so near to my face that I felt the wind from the bullet flying by, the machine gun rounds in rapid succession that were shot directly at me but were pulling the asphalt up from the road within an inch of my feet, and the rocket propelled grenade, the RPG, that landed somewhere close behind me, blowing me up five to 10 feet in the air and forward, knocking me unconscious for a few minutes. When I came, when I came to, I realized I was all by myself as the other Marines were getting cover and shooting back at the enemy. So I got up and ran. I never looked back and had my Marines and sailors, my Navy corpsmen to worry about. As a senior Marine and their leader, I felt that I had to get over it and do my job so that the Marines and sailors could do theirs. Marines were getting wounded at such a rapid pace in Iraq on that 2007 deployment with 2nd Battalion, 7th Marines, that I told my Marines and sailors to keep their gear packed up and on their side of the rooms because we never knew who would be next. We got in firefights pretty much every day and it was a routine that on the vast majority of our week-long missions from Camp Fallujah, someone was going to get wounded or killed. When that was the case, the wounded or killed Marine or Sailor's personal effects had to be inventoried and sent home if they were leaving Iraq, which was usually the case, and I wanted to ensure their families received all of their personal belongings. When Marines get into a firefight with the enemy, nothing else matters other than the men and men to their left and their right. People don't sign up for the military because they necessarily believe in the cause of the fight that they're getting into. Being black or white, green or yellow, and religion doesn't matter in the military as it unfortunately does in the civilian sector, especially in combat. You fight for the person on your left and right and all of the other BS back home of politics, demonstrations, people not getting their way or getting mad because they don't believe the same thing that you do, that stuff goes out the window. The fight at that point turns to the men to their left and right and keeping them safe by killing the enemy at hand. That deployment to Iraq taught me a lot of hard-earned lessons about manhood. It taught me that discipline and standards were put into place for a reason and that life is short. And that you never know when your time is up, so take full advantage of the time that you have with others who were put in our lives for a reason. I would head out of the wire at Camp Fallujah telling myself that I was planning on not coming back to Friendly Lines alive and that my time would probably be up before I knew it anyways. I learned that men who have gone to war together, who have spent some of the worst moments of their lives together, tend to be closer than any relationship that we could have back home with friends and sometimes family that would tend to not understand us anymore. That those same men that I would give my life for would in turn give their lives for me. That was the tightest bond that you could have with any other man. 
We all understood what each other was going through or had went through and the way it was to live your life by the day, living to fight another, sometimes just after taking a man's life that was trying to kill you or at least taking part in it. The moral of my story as I see it, even the cut down version of it as stated here, is that in a first responder's role, we all have a serious job to do with many things at stake, primarily the lives of the very men and women that we are sworn to protect. It is easy to take for granted the seriousness of that job and to allow ourselves to get sidetracked by other things. Mental health issues are serious and sometimes seriously overlooked. I ask every public servant to take a hard look at themselves and their men and women under their charge for signs and symptoms of mental health concerns. PTS symptoms cause significant problems in relationships, socially, or in work environments. PTS symptoms, PTSD symptoms are generally grouped into four types, intrusive memories, avoidance, negative changes in thinking and mood, or changes in, changes in emotional reactions. Symptoms of intrusive, intrusive memories may include recurrent, unwanted, distressing memories of a traumatic event, reliving the traumatic event as if it were happening again, such as flashbacks, having upsetting dreams about the traumatic event, and having severe emotional distress or physical reactions to something that reminds you of the event. Symptoms of avoidance may include trying to avoid thinking or talking about the traumatic event and avoiding places, activities, or people that remind you of the event. Symptoms of negative changes in thinking and mood may include negative feelings about yourself or other people, inability to experience positive emotions, feeling emotionally numb, lack of interest in activities you once enjoyed, hopelessness about the future, memory, memory problems including not remembering important aspects of the event and difficulty, difficulty maintaining close relationships. Symptoms of changes in emotional reactions, also called arousal symptoms, may include irritability, angry outbursts, or aggressive behaviors, always being on guard for danger, overwhelming guilt or shame, self-destructive behavior, such as drinking too much or driving too fast, overwhelming guilt or shame, self-destructive behavior, such as as, as driving too fast or drinking too much, trouble concentrating, trouble sleeping, or being easily startled or frightened. I reach out to all first responders and ask that we all take a good look in the mirror, understand the value that we all have in the fight at hand, and remember those we have lost along the way. Their sacrifices, 9-11 victims and beyond, have enabled us to take those hard lessons learned, applying them to our daily operations, making us stronger as a community and as a nation. Again, I thank you all for joining us here today to honor the brave men and women who sacrificed their lives, their time with their family and friends, so that we as a nation can move forward successfully, pursuing the happiness and freedoms that has been hard fought and died for over the years of our existence, that of which we all so desperately deserve. God bless each of you and God bless America. Thank you very much. Thank you.